Bring in Iowa Republican Senator Joni Ernst. She's a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee and is just back from Poland. Senator, thanks for being here. Thank you, Brett, very much. Well, first of all, let's start there uh, about your trip, what you learned, what you took away from it. Yes, walking away from that trip, which was 10 United States senators, a bipartisan delegation. What we heard while we were in Poland and in Germany was that Ukraine can win. They can win this war against Russia. However, in order to do that, they need to have the lethal aid necessary to push back against the Russians. That can be provided by America. It can also be provided by our NATO allies. We're looking at pictures of your trip, uh, but there is this hesitancy on the administration's part and some on Capitol Hill as well about being too provocative provocative in what we're providing or that there's a line here. D do you see that and the jump to World War III? I don't see that as we're providing aid to the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians need a mechanism to defend themselves. What we see is provocation coming from Russia. They are the ones that invaded Ukraine. We have been aiding and assisting the Ukrainians for decades now as they have built up their defenses, as we have trained their army. So this should come as no surprise from Vladimir Putin that we are standing by Ukraine. So it's already escalated within Ukraine. We need to provide the Ukrainians the means to defend themselves. And the administration is saying, hey, we're doing it. We're already doing it. We're, we're flowing this, these weapons in. We're with NATO putting different systems in. They're saying they're doing it. Are they not? Well, they say they are doing it, but what we see is a, a slow walk by this administration. When they are asking, the Ukrainians are asking for lethal aid, they need it immediately. And this uh, administration is so risk averse that they are just overthinking, I think, so many of the actions that are required for the Ukrainians to push back on Putin and the Russians. So we need to move expeditiously in making sure that the Ukrainians are getting what they ask for not just random things that can be sent to them, but exactly what they need to win this war, and okay. they can win this war. Listen to John Kirby at the Pentagon today. It's really interesting as they look at the map and look at Russian forces. Take a listen. I mean, we're at day 26, day 26, and they're still well outside Kyiv. They haven't taken Kharkiv. They haven't taken Cherniv. Um, uh, they haven't taken Mariupol. Um, and we're seeing them react to this frustration by ever more bombardment. You're in the military. You're on the Senate Armed Services Committee. Are you surprised by Russia's lack of accomplishment here on, on their goals on the ground? I am surprised. And Vladimir Putin has always touted the strength of his army. He has not unleashed the full strength of his army. And we do see an incredible will and resistance coming from the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian army. But what we are doing as NATO and as the United States is providing for the status quo right now. And what we need to do is make sure that they have the overwhelming superiority within Ukraine in order to make that difference and actually push the Russians back. Because while uh, Kirby did not state it there, the Russians are making incremental steps forward. And again, this is not uh, you think the aiding ultimate, us and pushing the them out. The ultimate goal is maybe adjusted now for Putin. Do you think that he wants to just control that, that uh, seaport area and a, a land bridge to Crimea. I mean, do you think it's going to be scaled back or he still has ambitions to go elsewhere? Well, I think he still does have ambitions to go elsewhere. And I would never trust Vladimir Putin any further than I could throw him. Um, but uh, what we cannot accept is something that the Ukrainian people are unwilling to accept. And right now they will not accept losing any part of their free and sovereign country. A lot of praise for uh, Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukrainian president. However, a couple of things he did this week are raising some eyebrows. Here's Jonathan Turley. He writes, the bans on opposition parties in Ukraine, a bloat of free speech. Many of us strongly support the fight of Ukraine against the Russian invasion, yet that support should not shield the country or Zelensky from criticism, whether it involves filming POWs or cracking down on free speech. The latter concern has arisen after Zelensky banned Ukraine's 
Ukraine's main opposition party and 10 other parties. And then The Week says that also there is in this ban a nationalization of TV news. Uh, Zelensky's information policy involves combining all national TV channels, the program content of which consists mainly of information and or information analytical programs, into a single information platform of strategic communication to be called United News. Do you have any problems with either one of those things? Well, I, I can't defend what uh, President uh, Zelensky has done. I don't know the information that he has received, uh, so I, I can't comment on that. But what I would say is I really do think we have the greatest system in the world. And we do have, you know, opposing parties here in the United States and ways to express our opinions. Um, it is a different situation in Ukraine right now. Obviously, they are fighting a deadly war uh, with Russian invaders. So I'm not sure what intelligence he had to back his decision. I just have a, a few seconds here, Senator. But you get classified briefings. You get briefed all the time. Do we know where China is on this war? I don't know that we will ever know for certain where China is, but uh, China has expressed displeasure in the, the brutality and the violence in Ukraine. However, they have not condemned Russia. So that tells me they are still with Russia. Senator Joni Ernst, just back from Poland. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank you, Brett.